Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Dave from the Coda with part two of my RetroPie setup series, uh, tutorial series. And uh, what I'm going to show you now is how to move ROMs over to your RetroPie after you've gotten it up and running. As you can see, when we left off in the last uh, video, we had the three options here, IBM, Ports, and Apple II, uh, using the Super NES controller. Uh, to go around there. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to move the ROMs over to the Raspberry Pi first before I show you how to set up the controller for the games because obviously you need to have the games installed to make sure the controller works. So let me switch cameras here. <clears throat> uh, what we're going to end up using is uh, any type of FTP application will work for you. I'm using uh, FileZilla here. Uh, it's filezilla-project.org. You're going to want to download that client. And as you can see, I loaded it up here. Let me minimize this, get a little bit better background. There we go. Uh, this is the FileZilla program. So now what you're going to need to know is your IP address for your Raspberry Pi. Now, in the previous video, I didn't, in, I didn't hook it up to the internet. Obviously, in this situation, you're going to have to so that you can move the ROMs over in this manner. There's other ways, but this is the way I'm showing you. It's a little bit easier. So connect this to uh, your, your switch or your router and uh, boot up the Raspberry Pi. Um, I use a program on my, on my, on my cell phone that is called uh, Fing, F-I-N-G. Let me just make sure that's the right name yeah f-i-n-g and what it does is when your phone is connected to your router uh, and you scan it it'll show you anything that's connected to that network and, and it'll show you the the raspberry pi as well and it'll give you the ip address so once you have the ip address and you go into filezilla you're going to go to site manager um, you're going to want to create a new site and you're going to want to i named it pi uh, you want to put that host name or the ip address uh, mine is 192.168.1.147. It's going to be different for you on your local network. You want to change the protocol from FTP to SFTP if that's what's set up. Your login type is going to be normal. And your username is going to be PI, P-I. And your password is going to be Raspberry. Um, this is the default for the Raspberry Pi and most of the operating systems that you put onto it. If you've changed it, then you'll obviously have to... Uh, change it here, but uh, I've left mine the default, so username pi, password raspberry. I'm gonna hit connect. It's gonna go through. It's gonna it's gonna show me. So on this side of the screen is Raspberry Pi. On this side of the screen is my computer. And as a test, you can see I have uh, one of my favorite games, uh, Super Mario All Stars, with Super Mario World included on it. Um, now I'm not gonna show you where to find ROMs. There's legality issues with that. Blah blah blah. Google it, you'll find them. Just be careful of the sites that you go to. But uh, obtain ROMs of free games or whatever, however you get them, uh, however you need to. Uh, like I said, just Google it. Uh, but you're going to want the SMC files for the ROMs. On the Raspberry Pi side, you're going to see the, the uh, folders over here. Um, you're going to want to go into RetroPi. So you open up RetroPi, you're going to see BIOS and ROMs. Open up ROMs, and you're going to see a whole bunch of folders. Now, these are already created by RetroPie when you first install it. Um, they're designated based on the type of system that they are. Now, uh, the older Raspberry Pis, this has N64 in here. The older Raspberry Pis have trouble running the N64 games. The Raspberry Pi 2, however, can run the N64 games pretty decently. So, uh, the one that we're messing around with here is uh, Super Nintendo. Now, you can see, if I switch back, I don't have Super Nintendo as an option here. What's going to happen is once I add a ROM into the Super NES folder, which I'll go into it now, and I'm going to drag this ROM, Super Mario All-Stars, which is a Super Nintendo game, into this directory. So now it's uploaded it to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, it, it essentially activates the emulator on RetroPi to do what it needs to do uh, to boot up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this, I'm going to hit start on on my controller, still using the controller here. I'm going to go to quit. I'm going to I'm going to restart the system and uh, yes, really restart. It's going to take a second to go through. And you're going to see that it's starting to reboot. 
Now, what's going to happen is now when it reboots up and it fires back up, it's going to notice that there is a ROM in the file. And you, those bings you're hearing in the background are my, uh, my TFTP. And obviously, FileZilla disconnected because the connection was closed because the computer shut down. But we put the ROM in the ROM folder in the NES, Super NES folder of RetroPie. And when we cut back over here, um, the RetroPie system is smart enough to know, oh, something is there. Now I need to enable the uh, emulator for this system, for this game. I'm just waiting for this to boot up. Now, obviously, to move the ROM over to the Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi has to be on. For the system to realize that a new ROM is there, you have to reboot it. So... Moving one ROM at a time in this, like in this demonstration, is not the smartest way. Just move however many you need to move, and then reboot the system. Making sure that you you have room on the SD card for however many you're moving over. So now you can see now I have Super Nintendo as an option. I still have my ports. I have my IBM. I have my Apple II. But now I have Super Nintendo. Now if I select this, the emulation system comes up and it shows all the ROMs that are available for Super Nintendo. It's not the prettiest looking thing, but, but who cares? Now, if I had more than one, this would be a huge list. You'd see them, you'd see them all the way down and be able to scroll through them. But Super Mario All-Stars plus Super Mario World, I'm just going to click on this. You're going to see it's going to load up this ROM. And look at that. Super Mario All-Stars with Super Mario World, the ROM that I loaded in there, ready to go. Now, when we initially set up the Super or the uh, Retro Pi, we set up the controller to work with the GUI. It does not work with the game. So what we need to do is we need to go in and set up the controller to work with the games. And that's going to be in the next video. So hopefully this was uh, useful to you moving those ROMs over there. Stay tuned for part three of the series. And uh, we'll show you how to set up the controller to work with the gaming system so that you can start to play these ROMs. Uh, if you have any questions, any comments, put them in the comments section. Give me a like so other people can find this video. Check out my channel for some more tips, tricks, guides, tutorials, LPs, and gameplay all the same on there. And like always, guys, good luck and have fun.